Those people are different as day and night. <laughs> Paul is using the same kind of contrast between darkness and light when he speaks of our old life without Christ and our new life in Christ. In this scripture today, Paul is speaking to believers when he says, you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. He's saying that before we come to Christ, we are dead in our trespasses and our sins, and we are simply just living life wrong. We are without any light whatsoever, and most of us are just content to be in the darkness. But then something happens. We have, by God's grace, been made whole in the light of the Lord because Jesus came to save us. We are in Christ, and now we are in the light. So why is this terminology used? Well, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Those who were once children of darkness have now become children of light. You see, our Lenten season is a time to evaluate our lives in the light of Scripture. Are we living as children of light should? Are we shining brightly in a darkened world, or have we grown so dim we can hardly distinguish between the Christian and the non-Christian. Let's see what we can get out of the scripture today and how we can apply it to our lives this week. See, each of, each, each of us has been called to live different lives from those who are still living in darkness and sin. We have the responsibility to show up in the world by living a contrasting way of life. Whenever we go, wherever we go, we can cast an illuminating beam of light into the dark corners and be a positive influence on those who are still in the darkness. In order to do this, Paul says in Romans 12, 2, do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. This does not happen overnight, but this is a process as we seek to live our lives every day. So is it possible to live as children of light in today's chaotic world? Well, first of all, we have to want to live a life that is pleasing to God. Our actions should reflect our faith. We should steer clear of questionable things as well as things that we know for certain are just simply wrong. Our actions must correspond to the light. When we live in the light, Paul names three things that will be produced, goodness, righteousness, and truth. These are in stark contrast to how we see many people living their lives today. They live life with malice, injustice, and falsehood. The, wor the word goodness comes from a Greek word that describes love in action. It refers to giving of oneself. In 1 Thessalonians 5.15, Paul says, Always pursue what is good, both for yourself and for all. A life of goodness doesn't just happen. Christ in our lives makes a difference, and because of this, we are gradually changing to a point to we, where we can make a difference in, our, difference in our lives, in the lives of others and in the lives of our world. Walking in the light not only produces goodness which reaches out to others around, but produces righteousness. Righteousness means living in right standing with God. 2 Corinthians 5.21 says, God has made us righteous before him in Christ. If we are pursuing right standing with God and others, we will live the same on Monday morning as we live Sunday morning in church. And people will see it. We won't have to go around telling others, I'm a Christian, because it will be obvious to everyone that we encounter. The third thing that walking in the light produces is truthfulness. It means the absence of deception. Truth is about what we say, whereas goodness is about what we do, and righteousness is about how we live. Paul says in Ephesians 4.25 that we are to put off falsehood and speak truthfully to our neighbor. In verse 4.15 he says, By speaking the truth in love, we will in all things grow up into him who is the head, and that is Christ. 
the fruit produced here, goodness towards others, right standing before God, and truth would make a tremendous difference in our lives because it would begin to permeate in every aspect of our lives and people would know that we are truly Christians. So how do we go about producing this type of fruit? Where do we start? We see that we are not shining as brightly as we should and we are not really walking in the light. What are we supposed to do? Verse 10 tells us, it says, Therefore, test everything to see what is pleasing to the Lord. In other words, the Bible is telling us to go figure it out, go figure out what will please Christ, and then just do it like Nike tells you to. Just go do it. You need to make it, you need to make it your business to figure out what pleases the Lord, to discover what pleases the Lord by experimentation. Those who live as children of light will be continually trying to figure out what the will of God is in every situation so that they would please God rather than grieve God. This takes our active involvement in our Christianity. We can't be passive Christians any longer. We must participate and be, partnered, be in partnership with God. Some things only God can do for us, and there are a few things that we can do for ourselves. But you need to find out what is pleasing to God. You begin to walk, and when you do, you begin to walk in the light, and then you will begin to believe the Word of God. Paul says that we are not to take part in evil, rather to expose sin. We do that indirectly by the way we live our lives. And we do that directly. Let your light shine before men, and they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. We sometimes need to speak up and say simply that that's wrong. When we see something that we know is not right and is not in keeping with the Gospels, we should speak up and say that's absolutely incorrect. But instead, sometimes we participate in the same problems in the world. Instead of, inf being, instead of influencing, we are the ones being influenced by these negative thoughts and actions. When we walk in the light, we become spiritually awake. Verse 14 is a wake-up call for believers who are in spiritual slumber. It was taken from the scripture in Isaiah, which reads, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. Paul is pleading with the church to wake up. The second part of this verse is an invitation to those who are still in darkness. It says, Arise from the dead. Step into the light, to become the light because of the salvation that Christ offers us today. So, how do we become children of light? First of all, you have to admit that you can't make all these changes on your own. Change that you make will last, but they're not permanent. When you finally admit you cannot change, that is, save yourself, you will find that God is ready, willing, and able to come in and do for you what you cannot do for yourself. You just have to also ask Christ to come and move you from the darkness into the light. You can admit you're wrong, you can admit you're a sinner, and you can admit you cannot change, but until you ask Christ to come into your heart and make that relationship real for you, you will not change. You see, he wants to come into your life. But you have to invite Christ into your heart. Then you must allow God into every area of your life, not just the places that it's convenient. God will not force his way into your heart. Yes, he can make you uncomfortable until you, in turn, you're in, until you turn your entire life over to him. But he will not force you. And people wonder why they struggle in certain areas of their life. They pray, they talk about it, some of them even moan. But they never turn everything over to God because they don't, for some reason they really don't want God to change that one part of their life. They want to hold on to that piece of misery. Because the Holy Spirit and the self or the ego cannot reside in the same place. The heart's not big enough for the two of you. You will either be full of Christ or you will be full of yourself. As you look back on your own life, what positive changes have you seen lately? Where have you seen the greatest change? Has it been in your heart, your mind, 
your desires, your values, or in the way you treat others. Is any fruit being produced in your life, any goodness, any righteousness, any truth? Are you trying to actively figure out what pleases the Lord, and then are you doing it? And I will leave you with this quick story. Benjamin Franklin wanted to convince the citizens of Philadelphia to light the streets at night as a protecting measure against crime and as a convenience for people traveling in the evening. When he failed to influence them by his words, he bought an attractive lantern and placed it on a long bracket that hung in front of his house. Each, e each evening he lit the wick and his neighbors noticed the warm glow in front of his house. Passers-by appreciated the light, and soon others began placing lanterns in front of their homes, too. Eventually, the city recognized the need for well-lit streets. I pray today that our lives shine brightly so that others will see the need for God's light in their lives and join us here today as children of the light. Amen.